Hello, I'm Dan Cooper, otherwise known as the Frustrated Gardener, and in this short video I'm going to show you how you can plant spring bulbs in pots for a bright, colourful spring display. And I've got three types of bulbs that I'm going to show you how to plant. The smallest are crocuses, and these grow from little tiny corms like this. And then I've got some paper white daffodils, a Christmas favourite, and these are going to be in flower about two months after I plant them. And then finally, I've got some tulips. The thing that springs are made of, this is a lovely yellow variety and it's going to bring lots of colourful flowers to the garden in the spring. And I'm going to start first off with the smallest of the bulbs, the crocus. And this is a variety called Advance, which has lovely butter yellow flowers with a purplish tinge to the outside. So they're going to really cheer me up when they flower. And I've chosen this lovely terracotta bulb for this. And I'm going to put some moss in the bottom, first of all, just to stop any compost from leaking out when I water this pot a little bit later on. And then I've got some peat-free compost here. Very important that, to use peat-free compost. This has got a little bit of biochar in it as well, which will keep the compost sweet. Uh, later on when it's watered and it's outside. And so I've just filled it up almost two thirds full there. And what I'm going to do is pop the bulbs in and just gently push them beneath the surface of the compost I've got here. Now there are rather a lot so I'm going to work quickly. I think I've got about 40 bulbs here all together. And in a pot you can afford to plant your bulbs a little bit closer together than in the garden because there's lots of nutrients in this compost that will keep them going. There should be enough to keep them flowering although it's a good idea with spring flowering bulbs once they're flowered to give them a little bit of an extra feed because that will help to build them up again for the next year. So as you can see they're going in rather nicely you can play around with the spacing for as long as you like to get them all in. I might not get every single bulb in here, but I've got a good spread of bulbs. Pop a few more around the edge like this. And you can see very quickly filling up. Now, as a general rule, I would plant crocuses at about twice or three times their depth. Again, in a pot, it doesn't matter quite as much as in the ground. I'm going to get them all in. Last two and pop in there. And as you can see, filled that up quite nicely. They're about two or three centimetres apart. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just sprinkle a little more compost over the top of the bowl. And then spread that out nice and evenly. Give it a little bit of a firm down. It doesn't need to be rock solid. And then I'm going to water them in very gently. And that, that should give them just enough moisture. Do not let them get too wet. They won't want to be too wet until they start growing. And even then it's a good idea to put some pot feet under your pot just to stop them sitting in moisture. And the last thing, of course, very important, I'm going to put a little plant label in so that I remember what those are called. I will top that off with grit a little bit later on and I'll show you with the next bulbs which are paper white daffodils. Now paper white daffodils are very quick to come into flower after they've been planted and they're a very popular thing to bring indoors for around Christmas time. They have this amazing scent uh, which no other flower has really. And in this pot I'm going to put a little bit of moss again in the bottom just a small bit that blocks the hole there and so none of the compost will go through. The difference with a paper white daffodil is that you plant these with the necks of the bulbs protruding through the surface of the compost. So we can fill this pot up quite full with compost and just give it a little tamp down. I've got six bulbs here and I'm going to plant them equally spaced apart, but as you can see the necks are just protruding from the surface of the soil. I'm going to pop one in the middle and five around the edge. 
Now sometimes paper white bulbs can be really big and it's quite okay to plant them almost right up against each other because again the roots will go down and they'll get lots of nutrients from the compost below. So as you can see the necks are standing up there in the soil and I'm going to water those in just to level the compost out and get them going and then all of my pots I like to finish with a little bit of grit. Horticultural grit, specially designed for this purpose, just sprinkle it over the top like this and if you tap the pot gently, riddle it around, you'll get a nice surface but you'll still see the tops of the bulbs peeping out and actually one or two of these have got a little shoot coming already. Again, pop my little plant marker in there and I'll remember what those are. Now if you want them to flower particularly early you could put these in a cold greenhouse now and that would bring them on a little bit faster. Otherwise you can stand them outside until the weather gets cold. Keep them in really good light though because otherwise they get leggy and only bring them in just as they start to bloom and your house will be filled with an amazing perfume. So that's two of them done. The last bulbs I'm going to plant are tulips and this is a lovely yellow variety. Um, it's called Fringed Star, Yellow Fringed Star and I've already put some compost in this pot just for speed. And with a lot of bulbs if you want to really pack them out with colour in the spring you can plant the bulbs in several layers and I'm going to plant these tulips in two layers. I've got 20 bulbs in total, which I think is fine for a pot like this, which is about 30 centimetre diameter. So I'm going to pop these first 10 bulbs in quite deep in the pot. And that's absolutely fine. Bulbs are designed to find their way to the surface and the light, and there's plenty of compost beneath them. With nearly all bulbs, the pointy side or the pointy end is what goes upwards. So there's usually the, the faintest sign of where the roots come out from the blunt side of the bulb and the new shoots come from the pointy side of the bulb. So I'm going to put those in there like that and I've filled up a layer and then I'm going to put compost on the top of these just so that the tops of those bulbs are covered with compost. Now don't worry about this because bulbs have a really good way of organising themselves so just having another bulb on top of it won't make any difference. They will work themselves out and come through very nicely. So here's the second load of tulips. You don't have to just plant tulip bulbs in a pot like this. You could have a layer of muscari or crocuses or little irises on top and that would keep the floral display going for even longer. So that's the rest of the bulbs there on the top and now the final layer of compost. You could, as I say, just about get another layer of bulbs in there if you wanted to. Something that flowered really early in the year would be lovely in there. So here we go. Lovely compost this. Very free draining which is what all bulbs like really and there we are so you can see I've left it about two inches beneath the surface there or about five centimetres and that will give room to put some grit on the top and for me to water them. So again gently water them in, not too much water at this point, we don't want them to get soggy and wet and then I'm going to sprinkle gravel over the surface. This is a really good way of both conserving moisture in the pot and it also stops things like blackbirds from pecking and getting the soil and bulbs out. Some people have problems with squirrels in which case it's a good idea to put a piece of chicken wire over the top of the pot and that will stop them unearthing your bulbs and spoiling your display. So there we go, you can keep going with that, but it makes it nice and neat, nicer to look at until the little shoots start coming through. I would now put these pots outside in a cool, dry, shady place, somewhere quite sheltered, 
leave them there, make sure they get plenty of rainwater but they don't get really wet and then you can move them into position in the new year when the new shoots start appearing and very soon in the new year you'll get your crocuses appearing, they should be flowering in February or March, maybe even earlier with some varieties. Your paper whites will be out for Christmas time and tulips can flower any time between March and May depending on what variety you've chosen. So there are three different types of spring bulbs all ready for spring and they give you lots and lots of fabulous colour. And if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of the same, then go to frustratedgardener.com where you'll find lots of practical advice and information about my garden. Thanks for watching.